Welcome back. It's the end we, of the world as we know <laughs> We it. are here. <laughs> this is the apocalypse. The, song that never ends. the apocalypse is upon us. <laughs> Have a killer pandemic virus. Uh, uh, did y'all hear about the locust swarms in I Africa? A, I have a confession. This is what I eat. When you is that? Might as well. Is well, Arby's man. pandemic food? Is that what that is? It is, man. Oh, did y'all hear about the locust swarms in Africa? I actually, yes. I did. Apoc- that is, the apocalypse is upon us. Finally. Oh man, y'all better took, get right. Took Who's long enough. Say? And the but, worst thing about it. What's that? There's no professional sports. <laughs> you know what, man. Well, I, I I did see some UFC stuff last night. I, I didn't know what was going on. I don't I don't get the UFC. But you know what really signifies the apocalypse? Jay Electronica's album came out. It, I yes. know it's in the world now. <laughs> I, I, we all better get right. Yeah. Now. <laughs> look, look, look. I woke up at midnight. I said, "Oh, my why? God. Why it really going. came out? Yeah. It's, it's, we're going. What's gonna come first, the apocalypse or Jay Electronica's album? <laughs> we found the answer to that. Uh, welcome back to another episode of Under Construction. Watch we know that sports point. is very light this week, but there's actually a lot to talk about yeah. in that in that context for at least this week. Uh, we have actually have a little bit of Charlotte Hornets stuff to talk about. Some some positive well. Charlotte Hornets stuff. To talk yeah. About. So. So let's just jump right into that. The Charlotte Hornets played two games um, this week before the they, NBA season was postponed. They played three opponents, though. They played. Yes. The we Hawks. don't complain about the refs. Okay, I'm sorry. We don't do that here. I'm we sorry. Don't, we don't we do don't, that here. Yeah, we're trying to be but more But if you saw oh, the game yes. uh, against the Atlanta Hawks, in which the Charlotte Hornets lost 143 hey, 138 in a double overtime. The two minute review game. said that nothing happened. Yeah, and uh, yeah, the two minute review said, sure. even though <laughs> traveling is, if you take three steps, three steps? I, I, uh, James Harden does it all the time. That's travel? Okay. I James thought so. That, okay, the maybe way not. I played. Maybe was, not. Maybe when not. we get a gather step. Yeah. Oh, yeah, that's right. So it's uh, gather one, two, three. That, yeah, that's, that's, that's what it is. Gotcha. And, then, right. uh, and then after that, the Hornets shocked the world by beating the Miami Heat, the darlings game, of the Eastern Conference, 109 98 after being down 20 points uh, early Amazing in the game. first quarter. Devontae game, Graham, man. 30 points in that game, shooting three pointers right in people's <laughs> eyes late. Um, and it was no great. Terror, I, and no Terry Rozier, too. No, and I was watching that on a stream. It, it it was uh, the Miami Heat announcers and boy, the, oh, man, so, the, the, so, the, the, yeah, God, so. were they saw? So, it's funny to hear <laughs> what they had to say about their team at the beginning of the game versus the end of the game. How could you lose this Hornets <laughs> game? But see, by that time, here's what's funny: by the end of the game, news had already come out. About the Rudy Gobert situation, and that, so they were trying to down out. Like we don't even have to talk about this game anymore. Yeah, they, uh, we, yeah, yeah. We, we informed our players in the third quarter, the right, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. They just kind of gave up. Yeah, they don't really have much to play for. Sure. Now. Yeah, yeah. So uh, it, it's it's funny because so that makes the Hornets two and one in their last three. Now two and three in their last five, but if you look at those five games, close. Close, All close, close games, man. I, it, I feel weird saying this, but are the Hornets a good team? They're not quite yet. They're approaching being a good team. They're on the cusp of being a good team. They're who we thought the Hawks would be this year. Mm. Great analogy. Mm-hmm. Speaking of the Hawks, wow. so you last like, week, you like y'all, segue, I, like thank you, you like sir. <laughs> thank you. I, I, I caught the alley oop. Thank you, man. So last week, what did I say, y'all? Said can't lose to the Hawks. Don't lose to the damn Hawks. And, of and course, what do we do? And of course, we. However, however, it's not all bad. All right. So, what? Kind, I'm not gonna say what puzzles me, but what troubled me about that game in particular is that before that game, the last four or five games, right? Mm-hmm. I, you know, JB's been imploring this team, "Hey, man, we need to be more physical. We need to play defense." We come out in that first half and we don't set the tone early. Right. Right. We're not physical. The Hawks scored 68 points, I think. I think in the first half, 60 something points in the first half. That ultimately lost us the game. Yeah, I was kind of surprised, especially, and maybe we had played really hard against Houston, Denver, San Antonio, and Milwaukee. Right. And then either one or two things happened. We just kind of got tired from giving that effort, but I think it was mostly because. Whew, we don't have to play Houston, San Antonio, Thank or, you. Yeah, it's or like Denver, Milwaukee. Let our guard down like yeah, it's so like, okay. The, 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 the wrong saying is played down to the competition, but they played down to the competition. Yes. <laughs> they played down to the they, – relatively speaking, they played down it's, to the especially competition. Especially compared to how they played against Houston. Right. 
you know, just two nights before. Uh, Terry Rozier, 40 points in that game. Man, I, I'm so sick of the Rozier critics, and I think he is too. If you want to criticize the Hornets because – They gave him the contract. Not even that, but because now that we're in a situation where we have – this guy playing combo guard where that wasn't the intent. Right. That's fine. But you cannot criticize Terry Rozier himself. himself. What yeah. else is he supposed to do? He's outplayed his contract, honestly. Yeah. But I, I'm going to tell you something else that I've, I've, I've noticed about Hornets wins versus Hornets losses. It almost never fails when P.J. Washington gets in foul trouble yep. early. Yep. He gets taken out of the game literally and figuratively. Yeah, and, and that always makes it always makes it an uphill battle with the Hornets when that happens. And and, and this game is an example of that as well. I'm telling y'all, P.J. is the, the truth. He is He's the, the key to the Hornets' future. He he does nothing wrong. I keep I say that week after week on the show. I cannot wait till next season. Where he can put it all together, in the yeah. Well, where he figures hey, out, I'm I'm hey, really real, good. Hey, real quick, we got some breaking news. Ryan Tannehill will not be as a Carolina Panther. <laughs> 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 word, yeah, the, the, the word, signed? yeah, the, the word came through. He just resigned with the. Uh, how much? Time, they, how much did they? Uh, how much we, did he robbed him for? He just won't be with the Panthers. Okay. That's all. Hey, no, we, going? we committed. We committed to Cam, right? I thought that's what. <laughs> that's no, what it's Will Greer. You know what. It's his time. Don't get my blood pressure up on a it's Sunday. It's his time. We already did. Back, to the, Back to the Hornets. Back to the Hornets. Now, <laughs> after the letdown in Atlanta, we came out against the Miami Heat and played extremely we well. Were. So, it's weird. If you look at the game, you know, we beat two playoff teams. Not mm-hmm. just playoff teams. But, but upper but echelon type teams. Playoff teams, yeah. And beat them kind of convincingly despite being down against Miami. Clearly, the Hornets can compete with anyone as long as they maintain a level of consistency. I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna tell you something, man. As much shit as this organization has gotten, as much criticism, and yes, it's been warranted. Let me be clear about that. As much criticism as this organization has got for draft picks, man, these Martin twins, man, I, that narrative is slowly going out the window for well, me. Bro. Here's the thing: it's like f- for years we wanted Michael Jordan to make the right moves in the o- front office, right? Right. Well, Looking he like well it. he did, right? Right. right. I, he he he's hired sitting, a, sitting back and letting Mitch make the picks and and, and run the organization in his image. And, and he, it's yeah, working. JB is developing the guys. It's it's like it, it's working. I just so I just I, need Mike not to touch a damn thing. Kind of like Martin I don't know. He, they say he brought. They say that he was instrumental in bringing Terry Rozier here. I, he, I, I, I'm assuming he had to talk to Mitch about that. Well, he had to, to consult Mitch. And Mike might have been just been the closer in that. Whatever. Well, I just need him to get his credit for that too. Whatever it is, because you know how this fan base is when, when it comes to anything negative. It's it's Please, all his fault. I'm just I'm just saying, don't pump him up too much. I, I'm not. <laughs> uh, all I'm saying is that right don't now, pump him up too much yet. The draft picks. The narrative is slowly changing about the Hornets Absolutely. drafting and damn, slowly. And that damn Jalen McDaniels, man, he's he's he has the potential. Those are our, we got glue guys. The Hornets haven't had a glue guy since MKG was young. Yeah, yeah, maybe since, yeah. since the Dunlap days with MJG. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, so now we got our glue guys in. They had to spend a second pick on the glue guy. <laughs> Did not have to do a number two pick. <laughs> don't go there, man. I'm sorry. It's gonna I know that should do it. It's gonna happen lose. again this year. We don't. We've talked about this before. This who, draft is terrible. Who are we drafting in the in the James glue. Wiseman, the glue guy. <laughs> Any, well, anyway, well, that's our show today. <laughs> 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 no, 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 Mellow. No. Hey, no. I, okay, I'm gonna agree with some fans that Lamelo Ball would not be nice, a, a bad pick he looks because nice, yeah, nice. he's he's got experience against international I think competition. He's got the biggest star potential. Yeah, honestly. he's he's His going. To, ain't looking too bad no more. He's either. going to come with relevance. Yeah. The, the the cameras will all be in Charlotte, and I know I know what you're gonna say. Yeah, I know, but that, that hey, might not be all good. No, nah, there's no such thing as negative hey, publicity, hey, right? And we can set up that one on one Lavar versus MJ game and. Stop. Exactly. Well, yeah. Stop. I mean, we got to we got to make the Hornets relevant. The problem is, I I don't see the Hornets drafting Lamelo Ball because he'll be probably gone by time. Well, the, well, then you've got to do something about Rozier and Graham. That's a tough decision coming soon. It's 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 it's, 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 it's you, 
you long term that's not gonna work. I I, I got a nugget for y'all. With What's this, the nugget with this Heat game in particular? So you look at the Miami Heat, right? And they've got what three undrafted guys or, or three guys that were not so highly heralded, right? Duncan Robinson, Nunn. Mm-hmm. Kendrick Nunn, who Kendrick Nunn who had a who had a really good game. Derrick Jones, Derrick Jones, and uh, Bam. and Bam. Uh, no, no, the other one, Hero. Hero, Tyler Hero, right? So you look at that game on paper, you say, man. Miami just had does everything right. Look at the guys that they drafted that came out of nowhere. Man, I wish we had a front office like that. Um, yeah, who's Caleb Martin again, guys? Who's Cody? Martin? Who's Cody Martin? Who's Jalen McDaniels? Who's Jalen McDaniels? Who's Devontae Graham? I yeah, that I, I'm gonna admit that I don't want to overreact, man. It's one game, okay? It was a very impressive game, but it's one game. But there's a little bit of egg on my face because. Early, on an earlier show, I gave the Heat a lot of credit. Yeah, and I was like, man, I wish we could be those guys. I basically said that. I was like, man, I really wish we could be those guys. Who said? Who now? Who's to say we're not headed in that direction from That's this true. last That's true. That's week true. or two or this season, really? So, but, but 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 to be at the Heat level, we have to make some savvy trades and, and get in the position. To oh, oh, listen. It, that start. Oh, no, l- listen. It's too early to crown us yet. Please, yeah. please don't mistake me for saying that, but. The, the the signs look good, man. So, so no more bad Rozier talk. No more bad JB talk. I don't want to hear it, man. I'm coming. No, at, I'm coming it, to cast throats. I don't JB, hear it. I apologize for talking bad last year. I don't, yeah. don't want to hear it, man. The plan is is working, which brings me to my next point. With the postponement of the season, let's say it it, it, it ends up being canceled. Either that, or they skip directly to the playoffs, which is one of the other possibilities which that's I, been God, talked about. That's gonna that would suck. That but, would suck, yeah. but. I could see them doing that. I, yeah. Does this stunt or is, does this hurt the development of our young core or does this help the Hornets in any way? Because confidence wise, it helps them. They, they, they're left on a high note. Yeah. They were playing very well. We, there, there is, there is no, we, we won't see them like falter toward the end of the season. They ended on a high note. They get a chance to, to, to go back into the gym and work out and be, yo, we ended like this. We got we got to get better. We got we got to do right, this. Right, yeah, right, right. No, that's a good point, man. I I think it's gonna. Yeah, these players probably already miss basketball. So yeah. If you if you if you, if you come I back, see, I, I seen all the kids hanging out together on uh, was it Snapchat? Yeah, or, yeah, or something yeah. like that, and and and, and, and that com- camaraderie. Yeah, it's, it's it's pretty big. I, I love that with the kids. So. The, I mean. It, it sucks for us because you like you, if you look at the Hornets' schedule and on paper, it actually the remaining games look pretty tough. You know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. And, it, it, and but Philly a couple times. Yeah, but Philly, Toronto. But with the way things have transpired in the last month or so, it's just like you kind of look forward and you wanted to see what these kids were going to do. But maybe those this teams. is the best thing for us because I think we were going to win. More, <laughs> more games, games than we ah, sure. and, You yeah, know, yeah, yeah. earlier in the season, I said that I I made a brash prediction that the Hornets. I thought they could get to thirty two games, and I, so, didn't, I didn't think. I, hey, I was thinking doesn't look so brash cat. now. Doesn't so. look brash. Nah. I mean, they, they would essentially have to have a winning record record the rest of the season for them to get that. But it's not a long shot considering what we've seen in the past few weeks. Right. Mm-hmm. So maybe it's a good thing that hey, let's just stand pat. Right now we're uh, we would six by six. Seven. We if if all the the balls fell the way that that they should statistically, we'd be right outside of a top five pick. We pick a seven. Well, which maybe maybe we could get some New Orleans luck and have those numbers not you know. Yeah, I, uh, those of you in the Hornets group, I made an interesting post talking about it's that voodoo man about uh, <laughs> draft odds and how. They don't mean as much as we think they do because of the way the new lottery system is. Essentially, it allows teams like New or- New Orleans and Memphis got the one and two pick respectively, respectively, and they were eighth and ninth, ninth yeah. in the balls uh, because of the way that the system is set up. And they got to choose our Carolina brothers, yeah, uh, future yeah. All Stars, Hall of Famers, probably. Yeah. Uh, Why couldn't we? We can't ever. We can't ever get lucky anymore. Whenever yeah. we do have a a the, bad, bad season. The, it's, yeah, it's like, like a bad draft. Bad draft, except for Anthony Davis, which you know we didn't get that first pick. And even I, I know a lot of people. We should have picked Bradley Bill. Let's be let's be clear about something. That was not a good draft outside of Anthony Davis. 
It it, it really wasn't. Compare. I, I'm just saying this. Okay. I I'm no. I'm trying. Uh, I'm trying to wreck my brain. I don't yeah, even know if I. That was a good draft. Yet. That was a good draft. But was it? Who who else was in it, man? Lillard. Okay, compare that to like. We, but we were. Com, com, compare man. that to like 2004, where you have no. KD, mm. Dwayne Wade, the I, look, look, look. I mean, no, that's no, what I'm saying. Okay. <laughs> Re- relatively speaking, no, because it. Man, I, look, what, this look, is, I'm, I'm, look, I'm, I'm gonna read off some names for you: Davis, Beal, Lillard, Barnes, Terrence Ross, Drummond. Yeah, but I, I'm, solid guys. It's solid. I mean, solid guys. We're not talking future Hall and of and Famers. It, it, here's and a, here's and the, the thing: the draft. You, it, it, toward the end, you had Rudy Gobert winning that draft too. Look, here's the thing. Outside of Davis, there were no like, oh my God, this is going to change exactly. the course That's of the franchise. Saying. Yeah, I, you I knew in 2004 saying, you needed to get Kevin Durant. You knew that that kid was going to be special. Exactly. You knew Dwayne Wade was going to be special. I remember having conversations about Durant, Kyle. I said, whoever passes Durant yes. is an idiot. Yes, it I was like yes. saying it. I, so Durant was there. Was a, y'all y'all forget how highly touted Michael K. Gilchrist was? He was the energy guy for better or for worse. It, the all of the scouts were saying, My man, Gorbe, he was the next year." But okay. I'm gonna make one point about if anybody after Anthony Davis. I don't want anybody to act like they knew oh, what yeah, Bradley Beal was yeah. gonna be. Yeah. Like there's These nobody. Are, I didn't. I don't. Man, nah. man I didn't man, see. I, I mean, I had people swear by Bradley Beal. Okay, okay, all right, all right. Even so, is Bradley Beal like? Was he gonna like change the fortunes of the Hornets franchise? He could. Man, man, that dude is averaging thirty points a game. He, yeah, but listen, he look. He eventually would have made us better, but was it going to be Anthony game? Davis? No, no, no. It no. was damn sure not going to be Anthony no. Davis better. That, that's that's it, man. I mean, I, I, I'm not even sure if he would have worked out. We missed that with Dion Waiters with Kimba yeah. Walker Ooh. with Kimba Walker being <laughs> uh, the ball dominant player that he was alongside someone like Bradley Bill. I mean, but you got uh, he played the long ball ball dominant uh, John Wall. Yeah, true. But to my point. Look at Bradley Bill when John Wall was his running mate. And look at Bradley Bill now that John Wall is. <laughs> That's a good point. Yeah, and, mean, and, and look at the height of their success. Exactly, it yeah. wasn't that great. It's not like they was making long runs in the playoffs. They, man, they, so. they were one game from the Eastern Conference Finals, man. Uh, yeah. Well, at one point. Yeah, yeah. That's what I'm but, saying. Uh, I'm, not, I don't, I'm just like saying. I, I, the <laughs> the Hornets, we need, we need to be bad during a year where, like, the next generational talent. Yeah, yeah. and I don't see. I will. It remains to be seen with this what draft, man. Hey, I will say this Cody though. I was terrible. I was actually Absolutely. unsure about bringing Mitch Kupchak here because I'd always Same. I'd always said oh. he never had to build a team. It's right. easy to win chips with in Kobe LA. and Shaq. Right. right. Um, when you when when free agents just want to live in L. A. for the hell right, of it. Right. Yeah. Anyway. So it's like, could he come to a bad team and change their fortunes and make good draft picks? And I gotta say, so far, man. I'm I mean, a, I, I was wrong. I mean. I had faith in him because he had to find the supporting players to put around Kobe and Shaq. And so, to me, a top 10 pick is kind of easier to make mm-hmm. when you're used to trying to find those diamonds in the rough. Right. Like, this man drafted Luke Walton, uh, Derek Fisher, uh, Devin George, yeah. Andrew Bynum. And Devin all. George, who was a Division three player. And, yeah. and then Ronnie Turrell. I mean, mm-hmm. he, he was able to find those guys – and Marc Gasol, he drafted Marc Gasol. Like, he was able to find those guys in the back end of the draft. So, I wasn't worried about that, per se. It was just, it was just how he's going to adjust to maybe having to to clear this salary cap situation. But you, you, I, That's what I was worried you, about. You, and him adjusting to, like, the analytics generation in the NBA. You want to know the, the, the most impressive thing to me about Mitch Kupchak is, you know, he, he's not in the business of just making patchwork moves mm-hmm. right yep he specifically said when we make a move we want to get a player that's not going to win us two or three more games we want to get a player that's going to win us 18 more games True. he all all the stuff he is doing is trying to set us up for my favorite term this season sustain success and the groundwork is laid right now and and i and i'm telling you and i've and i've always said this man with this draft thing, just get the right guy wherever you land at. You can't worry about draft right. positioning that much, man. You just can't, man. All right, so I'm going to throw this nugget at you guys, something I've seen floated around on the Charlotte Hornets forums. Was the Terry Rozier move bad because Terry Rozier ended up being better than we thought he was? No. No. The Hornets essentially ended up winning 
more games, a few more games, because we end up getting a good. No, because here. because the, the the person who probably posed that question is still thinking under the, the guise of the old lottery system. Right. Mm-hmm. Like, yeah. Mm-hmm. Right. At, at this point, you, you're not penalized for winning as many games anymore. The, that is true. The, the the odds are kind of flattened at this point. So, go out there, try to develop, and you, you land where the chips fall. That's it, so man. That, that's, that's all. That, that's 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 basically it. I think with some people, with some with some critics of the Terry Rozier move, it's, it it was a no win situation. Okay, if they, you, they, it, they reacted to the national media, the the, the Boston media. Oh, he was bad, and he it's, his it's, shooting percentage was terrible, and there's a reason he was a backup, and yeah, right. And so they they, they went with that narrative and, and and didn't form any of their own. Like this guy was 25 years old, never really had a chance to start, never had a no, no. And then when he did start, when when Kyrie was down all those times, he produced when he started, right? They exactly. Went to the Eastern Conference Finals, right? Yes. On right with him as the starting point guard, yeah. But nobody mentioned that when we when he signed here. Because you can't be positive about anything oh, no, when, no, no, when no. the yeah. Hornets make any. We were moves, all so. hurt over the Kimba situation. Everyone oh, was still that was still very raw, and it felt like Terry Rozier was kind of like this like weird like con- consolation Don't prize. Get me started, man. Let's talk since, since since there's no sports. Let's talk about that real quick. About, <laughs> we ain't got nothing but time. <laughs> yeah, I mean, the, the, it's 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 very odd to see how Hornets fans view Kimba. Now versus when he was here, it's it's kind of weird, honestly. I tell you what, man. <laughs> <laughs> I tell you what. The Boston Celtics, whether the season restarts or not, were in position to be where in the playoffs. Yeah, mm-hmm. and, and yeah. not and not not just in the playoffs. Like might win the championship, so like, like like championship contenders, right? right. I'm putting it to you like this. If the Boston Celtics find themselves down one or two points and it's like 10 seconds left. Who getting the ball? Who getting Tatum. the ball? Jason Tatum. Okay, one or two people. After Tatum, who? Kimba probably. Hey, thank you. I don't even think – I don't think Tatum gets the ball in that situation. I think Kimba gets the ball. I think Kimba does. <gasps> and, and no, it, it might not even be the right choice. It's just pecking no, order. Who, you know? Who's – because in that situation, who's going to make the right play? Right. Kimba. Right, Kim was gonna make the right play. Yeah, right. because he trusts his teammate. But you, you know, I'm, I'm, let, let's, I'm, <laughs> I'm gonna attack that Kimber didn't trust his teammates narrative. Who the hell was he supposed to trust? Uh, not only that, <laughs> not only that, but if y'all noticed, toward the end of last season, mm-hmm. when the youngins started playing, and more importantly, when Jeremy Lamb started being more trustworthy. When he, he came, right, yeah. when he came, when it started coming down to these crucial moments, you notice Kimba was giving up the ball a lot more in those situations. Am I right or right. am I wrong? You're right. Right? So this whole narrative of oh uh, man, you know he didn't trust his teammates enough. Was he was 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 he not justified in doing so earlier? I mean, because I, I remember the first game last year, he gave they gave that ball up to Nick Batum for the Game winning game shot and it clanked off the side of the yeah. I I, I, don't, I, I think too, people look too much at Kimba's assist numbers and I mean look even if you look at Boston, Gordon Hayward is a ball handler too. Right, yeah. he, he, he he can get his own shot. He's more like a a point four. He's he can, always yeah. been in the mode of a point four. Plus, Score. if you look at. Boston's and, it, and then Marcus Smart is a point guard too, who's basically kind of starting. If you look at Boston's style of play, they move the ball a lot, and teams that move the ball a lot get a lot of assists, but not just from one play. player. Player, right? I bet Kemba probably has a lot of hockey assists, right? In that, right, right, because right. the ball gets swung around to the open guy. And, and the thing, the, the 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 different dynamic with the Boston team is you got everybody pretty much outside of the center can go get his own shot. Right, yeah. You did not have that here in Charlotte. You had Kimba and Jeremy Lamb and also, it. I mean, <laughs> and, then, and then you had Tony Parker until he got uh, tired. It's funny right. you bring up Tony Parker. You know what Tony Parker's career average for assists is? About six. About six, five. right? Five or six, right? 5.5. 5. You know what Kimba Walker's career uh, average for assists is? About, about the same, right? 5.5. 5. <laughs> was Tony Parker a score for, he was like what, the third option on his 
on his yeah, team. So I, the idea that because Kimba's assist numbers aren't astronomical, that he either didn't trust his teammates or he couldn't facilitate. Kimba was doing whatever he had to do to win the game when he was a Charlotte Hornet. Mm. And sometimes that meant passing Scores. the ball to Nick Batum. Sometimes that meant taking the, 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 shot. the last shot. Yep. So, uh, yep. yeah, I don't, I'm not going to denigrate what he did here in Charlotte. Hey, man, good luck to him, man. I, I, I hate Boston. But. Then, I mean, he's coming off of the, the knee injury stuff and – Hopefully this gives him time to rest up and, and get healthy too. Yeah, I think this really helps the the postponement really helps players. Well, the the big name teams. Yeah, you know you no longer have to worry about load management. Right. You can essentially, I mean, imagine the Lakers now with LeBron getting some rest. Jeez, Louise. God, <laughs> man, you, you just Kawhi healthy too. Wait, hey, man, you, you just reminded me of something. There, there's some good that came out of. The season possibly getting postponed. Okay, so there, there's something. <laughs> no good. more Lakers talk. We ain't got to see the damn Lakers come to Charlotte. Thank you, guys. Bruh, bruh, so, bruh, so, bruh, bruh, bruh. so something good came out of all this. I ain't, I ain't got to hear these Charlotte Lakers fans and they even they boy come to Charlotte. Thank you, guys. Absolutely. So uh, also uh, another thing, um, you know, with the, the season being postponed, a lot of these arena workers are essentially out of work. Mm-hmm. So there's been. Um, a movement by the players in now some of the team, the organizations are starting I, to follow. I, we, I have a problem. I, yeah. I, I, I'd rather see the owners, yes. the billionaires take the initiative first. Exactly. And if the players want to chip in, they can. Yes. I'm, that, that's, but it, it's, it, it, it's which, happening, but it, I just think it's funny that the players are the ones that had to do it first. first. Yeah. yeah. However, there is an announcement. However, comma. From the Charlotte Hornets. They have agreed to... I believe, cause and y'all bear with me, cause this is breaking, so I don't have the entire they, uh, all the details. But they uh, teamed up the Hornets Sports Entertainment teamed up with the the players to create a, a, a fund, a fund for fund. The mm-hmm. employees. Right. So it's important to know that before somebody rambles about how MJ doesn't care about people. <laughs> you know, oh, it was it was Cousins, man. Yeah, you <laughs> man. All them the Jordan I, shoe money he could give it to I literally got a text message five minutes ago. Man, what if Jordan ain't set up ain't helping out the arena workers, man? So there you go. So don't want to hear it. Jordan can help us out because we don't make any money on We don't make any money, so and, uh, we need we've, a fund. We about to make less than nothing because there's no sports. <laughs> <There's> no sports. <laughs> Whatever nothing is, less than that, that's what we're about to make. Uh, We might make a few advertising dollars. If you listen to our sponsor, Anchor.fm, we'll be right back. Peace out. And we're back under construction. This is a small gathering of four people, so <laughs> so we we're, are allowed. We're by, safe for now. Yeah, we are style allowed by the state of North Carolina <laughs> to gather. We're gonna bring you. I uh, washed my hands a few minutes. Yeah, ago. Yes, before y'all came, I scrubbed with some Burt's bees. Here. We got plenty of TP in the back. <laughs> we straight. Some. I might still. Hey, give, give me a little, 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 little slap. Little too, there bro. you go. Shout out! I should have saved this man. for the end of the episode, but shout out to Amazon. Uh, did y'all hear about that guy who oh, yeah, bought the, the, the 20,000 yeah, 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 yeah. 20, cases of his hand sanitizer and, and Amazon said, nope. Moron. So now he is the most sanitized person on the planet. And I wouldn't buy a damn thing from him. Not one Not thing. You use thing. it all yourself. Yep. I might would if I had uh, signed this new CBA from the <laughs> NFL collecting bargaining agreement because the players got some money. There's a lot of nuances to this, which we're going to talk about. There are some good, bad, and ugly. So, all right. So, here are the six biggest things, biggest changes. Looking at my notes here. 17 game regular season. Boo. Boo. A shortened preseason. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Players get a 1.5% increase in revenue. (gasps) Hey, that's almost even with the league, but we'll get to that. Uh, Drug testing. Is laxed, particularly marijuana THC testing was. Does that apply relaxed. to Eric Reed? <laughs> <laughs> Not for uh, you kneelers. <laughs> you Not for you colored kneelers. It says it reduces the number of players who are subject to testing, and narrows the window for testing. Mm. Mm-hmm. Mm. See we'll see about, about that, that one. <laughs> uh, <laughs> roster sizes are increased by two players. That's a good change. That's, that's, a, good, a, like that's that. a great change. I like that. 
Here's the biggest one for Dallas Cowboys fans to be happy about. New playoff format. So it'll be seven teams per oh, conference. Oh, so they got a chance they now. They have a chance oh. now to make the playoffs for the first Ooh, time since their yeah. kids was born. Hey, man. Hey, hey, hey. <laughs> man, I want, I was, last time I watched the Dallas Cowboys Super Bowl, they had was a VCR. <laughs> you had to press the rewind button. I think in Living Color was going off, and then the Cowboys <laughs> win the Super Bowl. And then, I, no, 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 fun fact, after the Super Bowl, we watched Martin. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Martin Lawrence show. And listen to Jodeci. All right, enough Cowboys yeah. talk. Was Biggie still alive, too? Uh, maybe. <laughs> he was. He was. Tupac, yeah. too. Yeah. Pop, Big, all the legends were alive. Yeah. Yeah. Easy E. Easy, Easy E. <laughs> Dang, that's bad. Wow. <laughs> wow. Wow. I'm sorry, y'all. Yeah, all right, There's right. no sport, so we got to we we yeah, yeah, do we gotta fill up the time somehow. All right, so let, let's go Let's go down the list here. 17-game regular season, yay or nay? I know you guys are both I, on Look, this. man, listen. I guess the average football fan would hear more football. More like, sports! Like, more football, yeah! Absolutely not. It's a no for me, dog. I Man... Toward the end of a sixteen game season, by week fifteen, man, it Beat gets down. it gets watered down a lot, man. Yeah. And the quality of play does not look the same. Exactly. You know what I mean? You you know, you know who's gonna win, you who's, know gonna who's gonna, gonna win, who's gonna the only lose, the man. only drama is uh some of the divisional matchups. Right. Uh like we see in the NFC South almost every year, it comes down to the same with NFC East. Mm-hmm. Uh, those That division typically comes down to the last game. I think this does dilute that even further, though. Yeah, exactly. Um, exactly. I would have liked to have seen a provision where you play 17 games, but players are only allowed to play 16. Mm-hmm. That way you uh, have to determine who plays in what game, um, you know, so that. I, I and think. It, and there's only one bye, too, now. One bye. Right, yeah, still still one bye week. It's just, I, I guess that's to kind of incentivize them to to play hard toward the end of the season. I, that one bye. Uh, I, I'm also to me this this that's the worst part of this. I don't game, see the opinion. the benefit besides more money. I I don't. I mean, look, slightly more money. Honestly, honestly, I don't ever want to see an NFL player when the NBA players get paid. Wow, I wish we made that much money. Y'all got the weakest CBA. Right, in life. right. Like, Form a better union, see, right? I, I, yeah. I don't want to see it anymore. Right, but I don't hear it. but let's get to that. Let's talk about the revenue split because here's why the CBA. Here's why so many players voted for it. If you look at the, if you tiered all the players in the NFL, mm-hmm. how many would you consider to be top tier? Not many. Not many. Very small Literally, percentage. maybe a hundred out of uh, out a thousand, of, right, right, right. To almost two thousand players. 10%, yep. If you are not in those top 100, you would want to sign this because it means more money for you. Right. True. I mean, but you, but you could have helped. See, if, if you were stronger as a and more organized, you probably could have held out for even more money because that, that, that 17th game is a lot. You don't realize it's Not a if lot. you're not playing in it, That's though. That's true. That's true. You know, but guys, yeah. we're talking because this includes practice squad guys. Fourth stringers who may never see the think about all the third string. If you're a third string quarter, if you're Will Greer, right. you would have voted yes on this in a heartbeat. In a heartbeat, because you're not putting your body on the line every week. No, there anyway. so so you get more money, and they they raise the minimum um, salary, the minimum salary. salary. Look, I, I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna challenge y'all after this show to go go to Twitter and look at the difference in players who are. <laughs> Happy about it versus the ones who are not very happy about it. I'm gonna leave it at that. You know what it's, I mean? It's, it's the Drew Brees and it, the it, right. Rogers who are not happy. About right, it. right. Richard Sherman was pretty vocal about this. You know what I mean? But again, before the guys who's not playing that much, it's and, and, and then what's, what's troubling to me? A lot of the players actually did not vote, and you pay dues to be a part of the CBA and stuff like Vote, that. Yeah. It's, it's, it's your job to educate yourself. Yes, it's absolutely. funny It's funny how not voting really negatively affects things. <clears throat> well, in this case, God, voting might have made a, a bigger <laughs> Oops, impact on your money. So you definitely would have benefited from voting if you were a player, I guess depending on how you wanted to vote. One interesting note is that despite this new CBA, the NFL – players still get the least amount of revenue of all of the four major sports. NBA players get 49%. NHL players get 50%. And baseball 
gets 50%. NFL, 48.8 with the new deal. Now, we're only talking, you might be thinking, we're talking about 1.2%. But, but, a lot of money. but you're talking about 1% but, but, of, uh, of billions. A, right, right. Of we're, we're, we're talking about a $19 billion pot. Yeah. So 1% <laughs> of that is <laughs> yeah. very significant. Yeah. We're talking yes. about the, the, the most valuable sports league, league yes. in the world. In the world. Yeah. Um. Also, uh, to that begs the question: How are players going to get paid for this seventeenth game? Um, they said that an initial proposal would have capped the amount at a quarter of a million dollars per player, but that was changed to ensure that players will receive the full prorated value of their contracts, even if it exceeds that amount. So, um, for the average NFL player, that doesn't even matter. Most NFL players don't even make that a game, but for your Aaron Rodgers and your Russell Wilsons, uh, that's a big thing. Also, short in preseason. I'm kind of okay with this. I mean, it's I'm indifferent. Fourth game is trash. No one, yeah. It, I, I'm indifferent for one reason, man. The thing is, coaches are going to hold out their players anyway. anyway like, if yeah. they don't want them to play, they're not going to play. Yeah. And, and, and my beef with the preseason is you charge regular season prices to see crap games. Very true. Also, yeah, they did something about that. limited the length of padded practices and full speed practices, no more than two and a half hours, and um, no more than 16 full days in pads as well. I want, sometimes I wonder, though. Oh, the NFL cares. Oh, I want, well, I wonder if that's a detriment to it, It's one of those things where <laughs> this is good for the players, but as a fan, right? is it really so good? I, because I. Full disclosure. You know I like the NFL? Because you can see people get hit. I like seeing people get I like decapitated people on the field. I like seeing people get obliterated. It's, yes. It's well, like a gladiator well, sport. You can't see people get, get decapitated anymore, man. No, that's what I'm saying. The, the, game, the game has changed. I remember I used to have... The damn DVDs of the NFL, yeah, 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 the, the VHS, yeah. 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 Oh man, he still love those things. Twenty five years ago, Vontaze Burfecht would have been like, oh god, yeah. right. he would have been like Ronnie yeah. Lott, yeah, right, like, right, right. Yeah, uh, it was great. And then now it's like every time I see somebody hit, I'm I'm expecting the flag, like oh, here come the flag. <laughs> and, and and the thing is, is that the game is not. It's enjoyable in a different way. I'm not gonna say it's not as enjoyable, but it's enjoyable for different reasons. For different reasons. And yeah. I'm wondering, as you soften up the game, because right. that's what you do. You right. say, okay, you're not gonna practice in pads as mm-hmm. much. You're gonna have less, you know, shortened practices. And uh, th- what's that mean for fans? Like, how, is the NFL ever? Can they possibly ruin the on-field product enough for us to not care? Well, here's the thing, man. Uh, maybe this is an unpopular opinion. I, I I said for the last couple of years, the product is not what it used to be. It's not. Um, and and adding this 17th game does not make that any better, in my it's, opinion, it's, man. It's just great. Like, to, to the point, it's just, it's just like, you, you basically got sued for the CTE thing. Mm-hmm. And NFL said, we, 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 we're harping on safety. Is a seventeen game really safe? No, safe? yeah, right. I mean, these, these guys are putting their body through the rigors of hell. I, like I heard stories of Jerome Bettis not getting out of his bed until but Tuesday at, morning. At the same time, nobody's holding a gun to these guys' head. And they, saying, they know what they sign up. They for. play football because they love to do it, right? And, and they I know remember, what they sign up for. Yep. When they were doing that study, they were asking players. Knowing what you know now, they're would the you do it again? ask Luke Keekley. Yeah. Right, Luke Keekley would he would do it all over again if he knew his career was going to end the way that it did. So, and then let me give you a, a downside I just read. So uh, basically, for the current players, it's a twenty percent increase in pay uh, year after year. That's really good, but the dis the, 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 the actual disabled former players get a 20% decrease that's bad. in their yearly pay. I oh, that's, do not like yeah. that. So it's just like now, I, you 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 you're kind of spite the ones who kind of like paved that way for you. Right. And so right. It's, it's it's just like it's, right. let me, the NFL is not going to make a good deal like that to me. I mean, the owners agree. Let me tell you something, man. I I actually personally know an NFL player who had to fight tooth and nail to 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 get to get his pay after he retired from wow. football, man. He got it, thank God. It, but it, it he went through hell to get it, man. And that just does not bode well for future players who are listen who are going to depend 
on that money after football. Do you get what I'm saying? I, everybody needs to realize that every football player you come across ain't ain't rich. All these dudes, some of these dudes are check to check. You get what I'm yeah. saying? So that part is really bad in my opinion, man. And, and it's greed because when the Super Bowl drive off in the Hyundai. <laughs> yep. I mean, even guys. I mean, there are a lot of guys out there to make league minimum. Which we look at league minimum, which is uh seven hundred thousand dollars, I think. And we think, wow, wow. seven hundred thousand dollars a year. And that, that is, don't get me wrong, that's a lot of money. Right. But but it's not like if I make seven hundred thousand dollars a year, I make seven hundred thousand dollars a year. <laughs> right. <laughs> if an NFL player makes seven hundred thousand dollars a year, his agent makes a quarter of a million dollars a year. His lawyer right. makes a hundred thousand exactly. dollars a year. He's, IRS makes he's a got, lot of money. It, yeah, and so so then, and then, and then like you pay taxes in every state. You yes, play in. every state you play in. And then, so like, just, just, so just imagine you were like a uh, so the NFC West. So you say so you say you're a Seattle Seahawks player. You play in California twice. That's yeah, thirteen percent of your money going. So a there. lot of times, and this I know no one wants to, no one wants to hear this because they're like, so what they get. But a lot of those guys don't make. They're they're like us, right? Uh, they they really no, they they seriously, seriously really are. After everyone gets their cut, yep. their pay is what we make. And but the difference is this. I'm not sacrificing my life every day. <laughs> exactly. So, although I might be, if I go to work this week, I might be <laughs> sacrificing my life. But under normal under circumstances, normal circumstances. <laughs> I'm, not, <laughs> I'm not taking a risk uh, by going to work unlike these NFL Let me ask you guys players. an important question. Do we see lower management in the NFL now? Yeah. I, 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 think, I, uh, yeah. I think you do, and on top of that, why would you even be mad at it? I mean, we point? see we see it now anyway. Right at the end of the season, yeah. Uh, you know, right. team, teams have already locked up number one seed. Then right. Know, so they, they didn't uh, Lamar Jackson sit out that last game too? If I'm not mistaken. I believe. So. I think yeah. so. Yeah. yeah, they lost. They lost. So. <laughs> Bum, bum, bum. Oh, oh well. Also, uh, <laughs> a change I do like is increasing the roster size by two players. Yeah, that gives teams a lot more flexibility, flexibility. when it yep. comes to cut day. Yep. There are so many guys that get buried on the practice squad because they're just not good enough on the practice field to yep. get you know in the game. In um, yeah. now that they, they may get there, and now that you have an extra game with an extra chance for injuries, you know, it's <laughs> you might as well have two more roster spots. So. Also, uh, practice squad guys uh, will see an increase of 14 players per practice squad oh, wow. team, um, making like 12, right? Yep, and they'll they'll get a pay increase of twenty five hundred dollars a week, which Ooh. is that's for, pretty for, good for them. That's yeah, that's yeah. You good. take that any day, yeah, no doubt. Pretty good, pretty good. Um, and last, the, the, the big thing: <laughs> new playoff format. So, Dang. so now the way it's going to work. So, uh, the current playoff format, a refresher, six teams per two conference. Buys. Yeah, two buys, the top two seeds, regardless of, uh, you know, anything else. Top two, top two records, get a bye week. Uh, division winners, regardless of record, get a home game. Mm-hmm. Okay. Now the playoff format will be one. Team gets a bye week. Only the top mm. seed. Seven teams per conference. Um, division winners still get a home game. I hate that. Um, under this new format, the Steelers and the Rams would have made the playoffs last season and faced the Chiefs and the Packers in the opening round. This is interesting. This is interesting matchups too. Yeah, I'm never a fan of expanding the playoffs. playoffs. Especially not in the NFL where there's so few games. I feel like there's a however coming. No, that's not, not no however. Okay, I'm not right. a big fan of it. I don't. Um, when they, you know when they talked about Major League Baseball doing it, I wasn't a fan of it. I think. It, I let me tell you something. It, not to go off subject and off kilter. I hate the new baseball player. I hate it. I hate it. I hate it. Hate it. Hate it. I hate it. Hate it. Hate it. Now, as far MLB is trash. As far as shut up, man. As far as the NFL goes, Are you watching baseball this year? Nah. When they when they said they canceled no, no. the baseball season, I was like, it, still play that? Is, <laughs> is anybody watching baseball this year? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you might watch the NBA for the rest of the year. Right. right. But um, as far as the new NFL uh, format goes, man, here, here's the thing. We may say we don't like it now. 
which is still giving us an extra week of playoff football. Yep. And as time uh, as time goes on, I think I'll speak for myself. I think I'll be more receptive receptive to it as time goes on. I'm just like you know what this. The, I'll say this, the NFL, they're greedy, but they're very smart. Yeah, no doubt. The NFL's biggest advantage over all the other leagues, even in the world, is parity. We talk yeah. about this week after week. This really increases the parity. You it get does. one more game. Yep. And so you have one more. Ch- more shots for upset. Yep. yep. One more chance for your team to make the playoffs. And, it, you know, you get another slot. So, you know, you have more parity because, as we all know, all it take, all you got to do is make it to the end. Sometimes this is and a, and a lot of time, and how many times have you seen the hot team exactly. win, win the championship? I mean, instead the, of the the Giants did team. it twice, right? You exactly. know, ended exactly. up uh, the lowest worst or the worst record of all the playoff teams, and then win the Super Bowl both times. So I think this increases parity. I think fans will like this. Yeah, man, uh, this this gets me thinking, man. If I go on any team. It'd be an NFL team, man. You get fifty two percent of the profit. Oh, absolutely, oh, yeah. man. Oh, yeah. Absolutely, dollar industry, and you, you can threaten the players, and they'll fold in a heartbeat. Man, jeez. <laughs> Tampa's living in America. Well, I, right I think I think in any league, you could threaten the players, and they would fold. Not they, like they, the not, not like not like how, the NFL. They, wait, time out. There are two very important words when it comes to the leverage you have when it comes to these players. Guaranteed contracts. contracts. Absolutely, yeah. <laughs> the NFL does not have those for the most part. The NBA does. But I can I, I can kind of understand why the NFL doesn't have guaranteed contracts. Careers are short. Players get injured at a far greater rate than any other sport. Um, it, it it really honestly doesn't make a whole lot of sense from a business standpoint right. to play to guarantee a player x amount of dollars so knowing that he might let, 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 I'm, I'm glad you brought it up so let me ask you this why do why do you think the players have never fought harder for that because you would think it from a, if you're yeah. from from a player's perspective you'd be like they man we're at the most risk why don't, why don't, don't we get guaranteed they money? don't want to risk that money it's 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 it's, it's, it's about sacrifice like well the league, sacrifice for the greater good well, you're not going to do that here because if you do like the NFL did once upon a time and you go on strike, there's always going to be someone that wants Scabs. to play. The Scabs there's always going to be someone that wants to play. And I'll be honest. I play too, shit. Thank you. I play too. Oh, you don't want you don't want to play? I'll play. Shit, I'll be your fullback. Let me lose some weight. Yeah. And so, I, you know, I, I see both sides of, uh, of, of that issue, especially you got guys. This this may be their only chance to ever play. Uh, and, and so, yeah. So, I, I agree with you there. But it, it is – I think I I would bet that during these CBA meetings they are talking about guarantee contracts and the owners shoot those down because they say how can I guarantee Luke Keekley sixty eight million dollars and he retires now to be fair the Panthers are gonna pay Luke Keekley out the rest of his contract yeah, because because right. he's Luke Keekley right right so right, but right. for you know Will Greer right you know. Or someone, I, I, someone who's I, not a Hall of Famer. I, I just wonder, do NFL owners look at somebody like Nick Batum and be like, hell no. No, <laughs> like, absolutely not. We are never doing this. Ooh, look at that, the ghetto over there. <laughs> yeah. We're going to stay in this fancy What is Michael over. Jordan doing? <laughs> See, when, when we talk about Michael Jordan paying Nick Batum, it's a different conversation than when NFL owners talk about right. Michael Jordan. Right, Nick <laughs> exactly. So, um, exactly. I don't know. I think uh, if if the NFL season starts on time, um, I think this would be a very – I don't know if these changes are going to take place next season. I think it's going to be the 2021 season. Right. Uh, most of these changes are going to take place. I'm kind of excited to do something is, new. Another thing is the stricter fines for holdouts now. Oh, wow. And penalties. So uh, – Wow. So I don't know how I feel about that. I, I, it's a double edged sword it because, is, I, uh, you know, holdouts, <clears throat> I, I'm not a huge fan of because that's a contract. Mm-hmm. You sign a contract, honor, honor it. it. Honor it. Right. Okay? You know what you were getting but, into. Exactly. But, man, if you're outperforming but, that contract exactly. by a lot, man, you. you I, 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 okay. I mean, if you had a short shelf life. Okay. Shelf life yeah. NFL, exactly. Man. Okay. Good point. How many NBA players outperform their contracts before their next one is up? But guess what? They're guaranteed. That's yeah, true. They're guaranteed. But well, but still though, actually, no, that's a great point. Is is that a good trade off to make? Would you trade off holdouts for guaranteed contracts? 
Because you trying to tell me Kimba Walker shouldn't have held. I mean, he was underpaid, criminally underpaid, underpaid all those years, right? For five right. years. I mean, he, but, but he reaped the benefit of it. The NBA, you have a longer shelf life. You have more opportunity to or make you? that money. Or you do, do you? you do. In the NFL? Then the NFL, yeah. What if you get hurt? Uh, <laughs> Isaiah Thomas? The guy was an all-star, what, two seasons ago? Right, right. He's my hype, man. This, now, I, but I'm just saying, regardless, he was in line to get a huge deal. Huge money. And he got injured. No team I gave mean, him a I chance. Mean, but guess that. what? He made the decision to play hurt. That was his decision. Look, if it was me, I'd have said that. I'm like, look, y'all, y'all, y'all talk about not paying me anyway. But but see that. But, but, but see, that's the I guess the other the edge of, of a yeah. guaranteed contract. Because right, right. he can sit down and be like, y'all paying me y'all pay anyway. Me anyway yeah. So So team team's gonna look at that and be like, hold up. Like Nick Batum. Right. He's 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 never gonna play basketball again. <laughs> when he's done with the strong Yeah, he is. Yeah, he is. Well, in France. No. no you know, he's going to go you, to the Spurs yeah, and he's going to reignite his career. Yeah. Uh, do you think another team <laughs> like is going to uh, give him a, a contract? No. No. I mean, not long term, but I maybe, mean, maybe like maybe, a year, one million, but how, not guaranteed. Yeah, so if you're Nick Batum, do you play for that, though? Yeah. Do you play for one, Absolutely. $2 million Absolutely. for one year? You stole enough money. Why not steal more? <laughs> 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 Thievery. Thievery. I'm going hey. to ball into this guaranteed date. Hey, he apologized, y'all. Yeah, right? I know. We just, right. Let me stop being hard on him. Yeah. He, right, he, said he, he said he was sorry. He said he was sorry. I'm sorry. He's not giving the money back. Oh, yeah. Not Cash. giving the money back. Cash, All right. Cash app under construction underscore 10. Yeah, I'm telling you, Nick, Nick. <laughs> help us All out. you got to do out, is man. just help us out, man. Hey, man, we'll you're still got a jump we'll, shot, too. I yeah, see it. We'll help you out. Uh, but we're going to help ourselves by taking a quick commercial break. A word from my sponsor, Anchor.app. And we're back. We're going to jump right to our shout outs here. Shout out slash culture. Rodney, what you I'll got? go first. Uh, I'm going to give a shout out to everybody that's uh, remaining positive during the situation. Uh, people kind of, people need to take this a little bit more seriously than they're taking it. Uh, I just saw something last night. The death toll in Italy rose 300 more. Mm. Like. What we, the hell? <laughs> we, we we don't have like we don't have adequate enough testing here. Uh, Christian Wood was just diagnosed with the coronavirus. He's asymptomatic. He does not know he has it. Mm. So you may get fine, but your elderly parents or grandparents yeah. might not be fine, right. or, or your cousin. The who, incubation who has period cancer. is twenty four days. Yeah, you don't even know for twenty four days that you would have. Mm. So 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 please remain please remain vigilant. Be responsible. I, I was uptown last night. I seen. Way I was driving by, were. just trying to find something to eat, and I saw all these people at the at the at the, at the bars. I'm like, man, it's, take this more serious than you're taking it. I mean, you 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 don't cancel school for no reason. Yeah, mm. very true. Just so, think about all the money professional sports leagues are about to lose. You think they would just do that? Just, just do it, right? Yeah. Right. They recognize it. And uh, prepare your food and stock up a little bit if you can. Yeah. Uh, do do what you have to do, and also check up on your family. I know y'all wash. Everyone's washing their hands now. Wash your phones. Yeah. Y'all take them phones in the bathroom and wash your hands and come out with them nasty phones. <laughs> right. Just put yeah. yeah, there, yeah there you go. go. There Just you get go. some uh, Clorox drop. wipes. Just yep. wipe, wipe the phone down, down real yep. quick. You yep. good to go? Yeah. There, there you go. There you go. Ooh, please. There you go. But um. On a more serious note. <clears throat> on a way more serious. Well, on a more serious note. Yeah. I, um, I, I want to talk about something that happened this week in Charlotte and just what it means to, to us in Charlotte in general. Yeah. Um, a friend of ours, Lamar McNeil, a.k.a. Mr. Spot, who I don't even want to call him like a local rapper because he was more than that to anyone that knew him. Yeah. But he was shot and killed in a robbery uh, earlier this week. And like I, I still can't believe that happened. I saw wow. Mr. Spot a couple weeks ago. Camp Low came to town. He's real close with Sonny Chiba, Geechee Sway, and we all like you know hung out and talked to him. And we had done some songs before in the past, and we had talked about uh, you know doing some more songs. Hey man, Kaiser, I got to get you on a track. And, you know, he looking clean, sharp like he always does. Beard, very you know, well dressed, dude. Man. You know, I mean, just like the flyest dude. Yeah. In Charlotte, didn't have an enemy in the world. Yep. And I, I just can't, I can't believe it's just so senseless. 
Um. So yeah, we um. I, I'm I'm having trouble finding words, man, because it's it's really unbelievable, man. Uh, I I actually had just saw him maybe a week ago, and I always used to run into him because we all had the same social circle, so right. we were always running into each other, and. Every time we were running to each other, man, I, I'm I, I'm not exaggerating, man. It's literally like just this positive, productive experience. Right. Yep. Every time we were bumping to each other, man, it, it was nothing but love. He shouted this show out like all the time, man. Mm-hmm. Every time I run to him, he was like, man, he used to call. He was like, man, you like Stephen A. Smith, man. He was like, <laughs> y'all better not stop doing this, man. And he he always used to just tell me, man, yeah, man, y'all got to keep going, man. I love the show, man. And um. Every time we would meet up with each other, man, we would always just talk about like what he was doing, what he had going on. Mm-hmm. He was he was dabbing like film production, man. Yeah. You know, he, he had was acted MC. in, a, in he a few act, movies. He was acting in a few movies, man. He would always ask me what I had going on, what, what he, where he think the show was going, and I, I just cannot imagine anybody having something bad to say about this dude man and and every time we would see each other i'd be like there you go man i'm like that's the coolest dude in charlotte that, yep. that was that was my nickname for him like there you go that's the coolest dude in charlotte because it, it probably was not an exaggeration no no it was because <clears throat> anybody you know if you anybody that knew him man like if if, if you are noticing the outpour mm-hmm. and just condolences and general sadness Man, the impact he made on Charlotte, man, it just speaks for itself, man. And and it's it's yeah. unfortunate that we got to lose life like I, this, man. We got to do can't, better, man. I couldn't believe it when I heard it. You know, uh, my man called me and, and told me what happened, and it took a minute for my brain to like. What'd you say? Like, right. yeah, what? Like I like I still I just couldn't believe it. it. Took a few minutes for me to process what he had said. Yeah, and um, just for. For someone to die, I mean, so senselessly, man. Yes, in such a senseless Charlotte, we got to do better. A day before that, parents talk to your damn kids, yeah. man. Well, a, do a day better. before that, there was a shooting on the corner of Freedom and Tuckasegee. Someone's yeah. car just got sprayed Shot up with bullets, a girl killed a young girl. Why? Why, man? For what? Hmm. Like I, I don't, I don't get it, Charlotte. I don't understand. It starts at home, man. Every week on the news, and I remember, remember last year. It how many times? Oh, yeah, man. how many times did we talk under construction? What's happening in Charlotte? More murders than any other year. What's oh, well, this is the price of progress, and it hasn't gotten any better in twenty twenty. And now it's hitting way too close to home. There you me. go, right, yep. man. Yeah. We gotta do better. We gotta, we do, gotta better, man. do. But man, better. but you know, I obviously, man, we gotta say I hate saying this, man, but rest in peace, Mister Spot, man, but. Also, man, to uh, his wife, Josina, yes. who was also mm-hmm. really cool as well, man. I, I saw her right after I saw him. And uh, so just, man, for anybody who knows the McNeil family and Josina, man, please just keep them in your in your thoughts and your prayers and close yes. to your heart. Yes. Four, four young children? Four, four young children, man. Yeah, um, terrible, man. All, well, the... The only little bit of good news is that they did catch the, guy. the yeah, guys right. they, they who they believe did it. Suspects in custody. Um, I hope those guys never see the light of day, it, man. ever, never, never, ever, never. because there's nowhere. I, and I'm just gonna I'm gonna say this on our show. There's nowhere safe for you in Charlotte hey, anymore. Really? Man. So yeah, th- I, that be and we're not saying that. Try- say to myself, man. B- no, yeah. but, but listen, man, you 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 don't say that trying to be a tough guy. You say that because you know how much people love people this love dude, smart. man. Yeah. That's that's where that's coming from, man. Yeah. And we look, man, we are three black men who never want to see black men go through the system. But with all that being said, I want the highest punishment possible for these dudes, absolutely. man. Yeah. Because that's how angry we are that they, that they took our boy away from us yeah, like that, absolutely. man. Absolutely. So um so yeah, so it's it's gonna hurt not seeing him at, at the hip hop spots anymore. But um, we we got to do better, Charlotte. We got to, gotta, man. Got to be way better, gotta y'all. Got to do better. So that's going to do it for us this week. Thank you for being with us this week. You know, it's a tough week out there for sports fans. Hopefully it gets it's better. It's been a sucky week, man. Yeah, man, it's been, <laughs> yeah, it's been a rough, Lost rough week. And, I, and it's, it's really going to suck because most of us going to be home <laughs> quarantined for the next two weeks with no sports. No sports. Uh, esports, though. Yeah. Uh, get in the esports. Hey man, look, let's get a Madden tournament up. Man. Yeah, hey, uh, actually, t- today was the inaugural race of the Formula One season. 
it was canceled, of course. Canceled. But a lot of the racers actually are competing on esports now today hey. with uh, racing simulators because, <laughs> I mean, <laughs> I mean, yeah, 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 yeah. hey, like, I got to race somehow. It's so, worldwide, uh, man. This yeah, is a worldwide so may- Maybe thing. we'll be... Uh, Xbox Gamer Tag Mall fades them all. Yeah. Xbox uh, Gamer Tag. Dark Side D A R X I D E. If you see me on Xbox, and Xbox you know. One uh, QC Poppy Seven O Four. Yeah, there you I, go. I play Madden. I don't play Two K because because <laughs> I just trade everybody. <laughs> <laughs> Reveal, and, reveal. and then I'll talk about it in the Hornets group. Hey, y'all, what y'all think about this trade? <laughs> <laughs> so, hey, I'm sucking, man. Take it easy on me. I play on a uh, rookie. On rookie. Oh, rookie? Oh. Okay, fair enough. All right, y'all. Y'all have a good week. Please take care of each other Please and yourselves. Care, Tell the people you love. 86. You love them. We love you. We'll see you. Uh, hopefully, you see us next week. Peace.